Hallelujah. As we were worshiping, just that section of our worship, this word of God came to me from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. The musicians keep playing your music, please. This is Elijah experiencing the presence of God. And the word of God says, God said to him, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by and a great and powerful wind was tearing out the mountains and breaking the rocks into pieces before the Lord. Guess what? The greatness of God was sweeping through, breaking all the mountains, breaking the rocks. But the word of God says this, but the Lord was not in the wind, yet the wind was doing the work. Hallelujah. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire either. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle sound blowing, a gentle blowing. And when Elijah had the sound, listen to this. He wasn't excited about the earthquakes or the fire or the wind that was blowing. He was expectant and he knew exactly when the Lord would arrive. And the word of God says when Elijah had the sound, it was a gentle blowing. He had the sound and he wrapped his face in his mantle, his cloak, and went out and stood in the entrance of a cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? So when we are praying, when we are worshiping, you have to have that expectation that God is going to show up. And when you have that expectation, you know exactly when he has visited you. Hallelujah. He may not be in the sound that you, you probably expect. He may not come through the guitar as you expect. He may not come through the piano as you expect. But he comes nevertheless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your visitation this afternoon. I don't want anyone to walk out of this place having missed the presence of God. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My name is Bramwell, and I want to thank Pastor Gideon for giving me this opportunity to stand in your presence and to share the word of God that God has put in my heart this afternoon. I thank above all things my God who has given me salvation. He has protected me. He has provided for me. He has sustained me. He has brought me from a place of deep sin. And he has protected me and brought me such a place that I'm able to share his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God also that every time he gives me a word to share with you. It's always something that he has either delivered me from or he is working through me in that area. So I thank God that as I share his word, it's always out of personal experience. Amen. Amen. So today I want to share with you the word of God that he has put on my heart. And that is how to overcome pride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know this is a topic nobody wants to talk about. But I'm going to share it with you today. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. My father who is in heaven has been working on me in this area. And I'm sure that we can all think of someone who has pride in them. And perhaps that person is not you today. Amen. And if that person is not you today, then just take the message to that person. Because they need to know that pride needs to come out of their lives. Amen. Now let me share with you a few things here and if any of that relates to you, then just take it to heart and let God speak to you this afternoon. Hallelujah. Now I'll share some of the symptoms or the things that come out of being a proud person. And if any of that reflects with you, you don't have to shout or lift your hand. Just let it rest in your heart and let God heal you today. Amen. Now, I'll share some of this. I tend to be sufficient in the way that I live my life. That's one of them. I have a hard time sleeping at night because of fearful thoughts 
and burdens that I carry. I tend to replay in my mind how I did, what I said, how I am coming across to others. And I'm very concerned about what people think of me. I think about these things constantly. I'm afraid of others and I make decisions about what I will say or do just based on this fear. It's going quiet in here. Amen. <laughs> I often feel insecure. I regularly compare myself to others and I am perform I'm a performance oriented person. I am self-critical. I tend to be a perfectionist. I desire to receive credit and recognition for what I do. I find myself lying to preserve my reputation. I like having a position of title. And I always want to win or come out on top. It bothers me when I don't. <laughs> I like to talk especially about myself or people or things that involve me. And when asked to do something, I find myself asking, how will doing this help me? Or how will it help inconvenience me? I feel special or superior because of what I have to do. I think very highly of myself. I tend to grumble about what I have or not have. And I can be jealous or envious of others, other people's abilities. I find it hard to admit when I don't know something. I must know. <laughs> I don't get much out of anyone teaching me something. I have a hard time admitting that I'm wrong and I could go on and on and on. These are some of the symptoms of being a proud person. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know that our God wants to deliver somebody here today. I know that our God wants to set someone free here today. Amen. And so I decree by the Spirit of the Lord that the Spirit of the Lord be revealed here today. I decree today that the Spirit of the Lord will be received here today. And as the Spirit of the Lord is in our hearts, in our midst, in our church today, that he will bring freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So let's start with a bit of a definition. What is pride? Now pride is the desire to exhaust, exalt ourselves above others. That means hiding our defects and passing for more than what we are. A proud person has a very high and inordinate opinion of their own dignity, their importance, their merit, their superiority, whether, whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed in their conduct. Whether they are craving for compliments or fearing their own image or entertaining an overly critical view of ourselves, pride can be very, very, very glaringly destructive in our lives. Amen. It's the sin which caused the devil to fall from privilege in heaven. So the theologian C.S. Lewis says this, make no mistake about it, pride is the great sin. It's the devil's most effective and destructive tool in our lives. And it was through pride that the devil became the devil. So remember this as we go through today's word. Amen. And pride leads to every other sin that you can think of in our lives. Hallelujah. It's conspicuous amongst the rich, the powerful, the successful, the famous, the celebrities. And it is also conspicuous amongst the yous and the me's that are in this earth today. Amen. It's dangerous to our souls and greatly hinders our intimacy with God. Hallelujah. On the opposite is humility which is often seen in our world today as weakness. And few of us know much about it or pursue humility. Today we will learn how pride works in our lives. The destruction that it purposes to bring into our lives. 
And then we will see how God relieves us of this sin. Amen. I don't want you to feel condemned here today. Because there is Jesus. Hallelujah. Do not be silent feeling condemned. I know that when this happens, when, the, when you hear these things, when you hear these symptoms of, 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 of pride, the enemy wants you to feel condemned. And I want you to tell yourself right now, there is Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's look at the origin of this sin that is pride. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 3, where the sin or the spirit of pride starts to manifest itself. Now Genesis chapter 3, from, uh, I'll read from verse 1, I believe. Do we have this? Yes. From verse 1 there. Now the Bible says this. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now this was the beginning of the devil wanting to cause Eve to reject his, her God. Hallelujah. He says this, this shocking rejection of God. God's word introduced Eve to the unknown possibility of unbelief. Because if you read that, you can see how the devil is phrasing it, right? Let's step back. He says, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Up until this moment, Eve listened to God. When God spoke, Eve listened and he, she did what God told her. But at this point, the enemy comes and craftily brings the lies to, to, to Eve and makes her believe that God did not want her to know the truth. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden. Let's continue. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it. Nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Continue. When the serpent said, sorry, then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. What is he doing? He's trying to make Eve think that God lied to her. Do you see that the deception, the way that the enemy is starting to work in Eve's life, and this is the beginning of our life as human beings. So at the very beginning, the enemy is lying to Eve. Amen. This was a clever plan that was meant to undermine her confidence and knowledge of God's goodness. The desire to lift up and exalt ourselves beyond our place as God's creatures lies in the heart of pride as we know it. Now Eve is in a deceived, deceived state here right now. And let's move on to verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of the fruit and she ate it. And she also gave some to her husband with her and he also done what? He ate it. Say he ate it. Yes, in well-calculated moves, the devil was able to use the pride that was in the, 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 in the devil in himself to weaken Eve's faith. And she opted for autonomy. She chose to disobey God and to disobey his command from that point on. And the word of God says in James chapter 1 verse 14 to 15, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Now, the enemy does not come to you with something that is far-fetched. He always chooses something that is close to your heart, and that is what he uses to target you. But remember what? There is Jesus who, through the cross, gave us a new beginning. Hallelujah. He gives us hope where there is no hope. Where the enemy has misled us from Jesus, Jesus gives us hope. Hallelujah. 
in the thinking, in their thinking, in our thinking, God becomes smaller when we start to become proud and we become larger than our God. Hallelujah. We become the center of our world and God becomes less, less of importance. You can see that Eve has started making her own decisions. She has neglected what God is telling her and wants to follow his, her own ways. We become self-important and God becomes less of importance in our lives. And this cycle that happens, it happens all of the time. It leads us into a place of arrogance, thinking that God does not matter and we are more important. We understand these things better than God does. Hallelujah. Now, I've chosen in many, in the Bible, we read a lot of stories about how pride brings people down. But today I've chosen the story of Uzziah in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And we will just pick a few verses there and I will share with you to see how God intends for us to have a great time. As you have seen, for if God really intended for them to be successful in the Garden of Eden, but because of the enemy, he pulled them away. And you can see in every story that we see in the Bible that God intends good, but the enemy takes us away from the good that God has purposed for us. Amen. Now, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, the story of Uzziah is very interesting. We'll start from verse 4 going forward. Now, Uzziah was about 16 years old when he started ruling in Israel. Now, he's, he, he ruled for over 50 years. Now, just to put it into perspective, uh, King David ruled for 40 years. But Uzziah, you can see he led for over 50 something years. And the word of God says from verse 4, he did right in the sight of the Lord in accordance with everything that his father Amaziah had done. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as he sought and inquired of the Lord, God caused him to prosper. Hallelujah. As long as you inquire and seek the face of God, God causes what? Causes you to prosper. But when we start to turn away from God, that is when things start to come down. You have seen with Eve and now we start to see with, with, with Uzziah here that he, as long as he looked to God, in those days the kings had a priest. A priest was their spiritual leader and they looked to him. And indeed, there are some who ignored the priest and indeed their life ended badly, as we will read shortly. Take note, as a result of trusting God, he acquired wealth. If you read the whole chapter, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but he acquired great wealth. And he also become, became powerfully politically. He became powerfully militarily. That is the grace of God. Because he wants to pour his provision. He wants to pour his pro pro provision. And he wants to pour his presence into your rule, into your reign, into your home when you look to him. The verse, verse 15 says, his fame spread far. For he was marvelously helped until he was strong. When you trust in this God, he sends the right people you away to support you so that you will be powerful. And this is what was happening with Uzziah. But verse 16, we continue. But when Uzziah became strong, he became so proud. And I'm using the amplified version because it amplifies some of these words so you get the meaning of it. When Uzziah became strong, he became so proud of himself and his accomplishments. That he acted corruptly and he was unfaithful and sinned against the Lord, his God. For he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Now it wasn't enough that God had made him king. He wants to be the priest as well. Now he thinks he can do the job better than the priest is doing it. Now, I know that there are many in this church, of many of you probably where you have been, you've probably led a church, you've probably led worship, you've probably led in the church in many areas of service. 
But without God's anointing, you cannot stand on the stage here and worship and lead people into worship. You cannot lead people into the presence of God until you receive God's anointing. Hallelujah. So just a reminder as we go through this word, that as you look at someone and you see that person perhaps sharing the word of God as I'm sharing, or perhaps leading worship, or perhaps playing the guitar, or perhaps leading the service. And also in your workplace, you look at your manager and think, I can do a better job than the manager that I have. I can do a better job than the king that we have. I can do a better job than the boss that I have. Remember, that person is there because God has placed them there for a reason. Hallelujah. God had placed the priest there for a good reason. And he was king for a good reason and not a priest. And so when he deviated from the way of the Lord and started to think he can be the priest, God started to pull him down. Hallelujah. Now let's read on verse 17. Uzziah the priest, he went in after him. He went after, uh, uh, sorry, Azariah the priest went in into the temple after him, Uzziah, and with him 80 priests of the Lord, men of courage. They opposed King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Do not forget these sons of Aaron had been doing this for many years. And it's not just because they had experience. You think you have the experience. There is anointing upon these people. These people received anointing and therefore that is what Uzziah was despising. Not the people who were going in, the, in there as priests. He was despising the anointing that is upon, upon these people. Hallelujah. And they told him, get out of the sanctuary. For you have been unfaithful and will have no honor from the Lord. Now, with the passion for Christ, we hold people to account in this house. We hold each other to account because Christ has given us an understanding of his word. And therefore, when he calls you to account, when he's speaking to you today, do not ignore what he's saying because he wants you to get to greater heights. Hallelujah. Jesus does not want to condemn you. He wants you to get to greater heights today. Hallelujah. And therefore, when he brings correction, he wants you to move to the next level. Hallelujah. Now, let's read on verse 19 to 21, and I'll stop there and move on. Then Uzziah, with a censer in his hands, to, sorry, with a censer in his hands to burn incense, was enraged. Now, this is part of what happens when pride takes over. There is anger. When you start feeling angry in your life because someone is bringing correction, just know that pride sits somewhere in your heart. He was enraged. And while he was enraged with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead. Before the priests in the house of the Lord, there was no hiding of the leprosy that was on his face. Now today we do not have, perhaps we do not have leprosy, but there are other things that sin brings into our lives. And we need to overcome those by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Verse 20, as Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked toward him, behold, he was leprous on his forehead and they hurried him out of there. And he was hurried to get out because the Lord had stricken him. He cannot be in the house of the Lord with the leprosy that he is carrying because of the sins that he has committed. King Uzziah, now this is the sad part. You would hope that when God brings correction like he's bringing today, that you can repent and turn to God. But read what happened to King Uzziah. King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death. He has ruled and to the day of his death, he was a leper. He had no remorse. He had no moment where he thought, I have sinned against God and I need to repent and turn back to God. He died a leper. And being a leper, he lived, sorry, being a leper, he lived in a separate house. Listen to this. He lived in a separate house. That alone did not cause Uzziah to think, I need to, to change my ways. 
he was excluded from the house of the Lord. And his son Jotham took charge of the king's household, judging and governing the people of the land. That's where pride can take us. But there is Jesus. Hallelujah. There is Jesus. There is Jesus. There is hope for a person like myself. There is hope for a person like you. Hallelujah. And as I say to you, I do not share with you a word that God has put on my heart without knowing that it's transformed my life. Hallelujah. Because it's transformed my life, I can share with you from personal experience. And I know that the minute I made a decision in my mind that I want to move away from pride, God unleashed, he released so much blessing. He started to accelerate things in my life. So I know when I tell you that God wants to lift you to a greater height, I know that it's real. It's happened for me and it's happened for many others. And he is still working in me. Hallelujah. So I know that there are greater heights that he's going to take me. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now when we read again in the Bible, we read, we come to Luke chapter 22 Verse 24 to 27. You read about Jesus speaking about the, 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 the Pharisee and the tax collector, which we will read shortly. Let's just move on for, for a moment. And he says, he says that only, only the tax collector was able to come into the presence of God and see, see Jesus for who he is. While the Pharisee focused on his greatness. As C.S. Lewis again observes, he says, Pride is a spiritual cancer that eats up at the very possibility of love or contentment or even common sense in us. So pride, it is the thing that is the source of your undoing if you tolerate it. However, ironically, the more that we have pride in ourselves, the more we dislike it in other people. Hallelujah. The more we have pride in ourselves, the more we notice it in other people and think, oh, that man, that woman is so proud. Indeed, pride can be our undoing. And if you want to find out how proud you are, the easiest way is to ask yourself, how much do I dislike it when people ignore me or when they refuse to take notice of me? Or they shove me aside, or they patronize me, or they shove. Hallelujah. There can be no sure. William Law says this, again, another teacher of, 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 of the scripture. There can be no surer proof of a con confirmed pride than a belief that one is sufficiently humble. Hallelujah. When we think we are humble, when we think in our hearts we are humble, indeed, that is when actually pride is in us. So how do you know that you are, you are a proud person? I've, I'm going to share a few, a few areas and hopefully this will help you to know and be able to turn back to Jesus and let him deliver you, let him redeem you from this sin. Hallelujah. Self-exaltation. Yes, self-exaltation is when you give yourself credit for what you have done. When you succeed and you go, I am the greatest I am the sole reason for my success. God reminds us in James chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Hallelujah. Because of our God, because of Jesus, he is your provider. When you think you are providing for your household out of your own power, out of your strength, my friend, you are lost because only God can provide for you. Amen. Secondly, self-promotion. Yes, pride welcomes credit from others. When we put forth our, our success so that other people will compliment us, Jesus reminds us this. Matthew 6, verse 1 to 2. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Literally, that's all you'll have. Praise from other people and nothing else. 
That's when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have already received their reward. They will receive nothing in heaven. Hallelujah. Self-justification. When you come before God with boldness, that is a good thing. We can come before God. Even John kept saying in, the, in his writing, the, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Yes, we can come before God. We can come before Jesus with boldness, knowing who he is. However, it is pride that makes us think that we are justified because we are good. Because we read our Bible, because we pray, because we fast, we think that we are justified because of our actions. But no, we are not justified because of our actions. It's only because of Jesus. Hallelujah. We cannot justify ourselves out of our actions. Yes, we fast and seek the face of God, but only Jesus can justify our actions, not ourselves. Hallelujah. So do not justify yourselves. And this happens quite a lot for us who believe in Christ and in the, are, uh, are in the house of God. We justify ourselves because of our actions. But Jesus, only Jesus, the sacrifice on the cross, the death on the cross, and his resurrection and his blood shed on the cross, only that can justify us. Hallelujah. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Luke 18, verse 10 to 14. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed this. God, I thank you that I'm not like these other men. They're extortioners. They're unjust. They're adulterers. Or even like this tax collector over here. I fast twice a week. I give my tithes all, all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to the heaven. But he beat his breast saying this, God be merciful to me a sinner. I tell you this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, the Pharisee. For everyone who exalts himself will do what? Will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Hallelujah. This is our God. Only Jesus can justify us. Hallelujah. Now some of the others that I'm going to share with you, they're not so obvious. These that I've shared, the first three, are kind of obvious. Lifting ourselves and making ourselves look like we deserve, like we are the best. Now the next one is self-pity. Now you think self-pity? No. Yes, a prideful person can degrade himself privately and they demote themselves in public. The reason self-pity does not look like pride is because it appears to be needy. But the neediness is actually is not because they are needy, it's because they are in need of being seen to be worthy. Now, that's what's happening when you start to, be, to, self, to pity yourself and think they're not noticing me. That is self-pity. Again, the bottom line here is pride eating away into your soul. Self-condemnation. Again, pride justifying yourself. You condemn yourself, but that's because you have set standards of your own viewing, not the standards that God has set for you. You have chosen your own standard and you have chosen to decide that this, where I am right now is not sufficient enough because God does not know where I should be. God knows where exactly you should be at every moment and he has a purpose and a plan for your life to bring you to a higher place. But you've got to be willing to accept his standard and to accept his preparation that he prepares you. Hallelujah. Now, this is another one that goes towards other people. Fault finding. Yes, pride causes us to filter out the evil that we see in ourselves and at the same time causes us to see the, 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 to see the fault that is in other people. We sift other people and we see all the things that they are doing wrong and forget what is in us. Now, parents, listen up. I'm a parent like you. 
and we will see the faults in our children all of the time. Now, we have a saying that says the fruit does not fall far from the tree, right? Every time I'm criticizing my daughter, I start to remember what does this say about me? Now, parents remember this all of the time. Every time you say something about your child, let it come from a place of Christ, not a place of pride. Hallelujah. Do not start thinking, I can do better than that. When I was little, I did better than that. Right? We tell them, when I was little, I could not have done that to my parent. I could not have done that to my father. Remember, only Christ can justify you. You say it to your children and let Christ speak to them. Hallelujah. You are already doing a great job being a parent who knows Jesus. You are already doing a great job being a parent that knows Christ. Right? Do not push too hard. Let them know that Christ lives in them and Christ will cause the difference in their lives to come through. Hallelujah. Do not criticize your children. Once you have told them what they need to know, let Christ minister to them. Amen. Amen. A harsh spirit. A harsh spirit goes beyond being critical. He goes higher. He goes beyond that. It becomes every time they look that your children look at you, they think mom is going to be upset with me. A harsh spirit. When you walk into the office, they think, what is he going to say today? The boss that is here today, what is he going to say today? That is a harsh spirit. Again, it finds its root from pride. And today Jesus wants to deliver you. Amen. Being superficial. That's another one. You see something, however small it is, you make a big deal of it. That is again, the root of it is pride. Hallelujah defensiveness. When someone is saying something, you're already preparing yourself to defend yourself because it's not your fault. It's not you. The root of that is pride. Hallelujah. Desperation for attention. Pride causes you to be desperate for attention. When people don't notice you, you get upset. You turn away and think they did not notice me. And lastly, neglecting others. You focus on the high and mighty, the people that are important, the people that you think are important in your life, and the people that are less of value, you neglect them. Again, the root of that is pride. And today Jesus wants to get rid of that. Amen. Pride is a bad thing. He wants to steal away everything in your life. And today Jesus wants to deliver you. Mark Chapter 7, verse 20 to 22. Jesus says this. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of the man's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and fully, all these evil things come from inside and they make a man unclean. So when all these things are coming out, remember, what is the spirit behind that? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Understand this, that in the last days, we are in the last days today, amen? These are dangerous times. Times of great stress and trouble, according to the Amplified Version. There will come difficult times that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, focused on themselves, lovers of money, impelled by greed. They will be boastful. They will be arrogant. They'll be revilers, disobedient to parents. Children, be obedient to your parents. Remember this. Ungrateful, unholy, and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection. They will be inhumane, irreconcilable, malicious gossip, devoid of self-control, immoral, brutal, haters of good. They will be traitors, reckless, conceited and lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God. Holding on to the form of godliness, 
that is religion, although they have denied its power, the power that is therein. You cannot say you believe in Christ Jesus when indeed you reject the blood of Jesus that sets you free from sin. Hallelujah. Now, how do you overcome the pride that is sinful, that destroys our lives? Only God's grace. Only God's grace. It's only God's grace that can deliver you from pride. On not, not your power, not your strength, not your ability, not your understanding, not the things in your heart. Only the grace of Jesus can deliver you today. Hallelujah. That applies for me. It applies for each one of us. The believers, non-believers, only the grace of Christ can deliver us from, from the sin that we experience today. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any, griev any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way that is everlasting. This is David. And I pray that right now as I'm speaking this word, rather than feel condemned, hold on to that hope that is Christ. Even if you have been in that place and you realize that your life has gone so deep into pride, hold on to that hope that is Jesus Christ. Because that's the only thing you have today. Hallelujah. God gave Uzziah the warnings that he needed so that he changed his ways. He did not condemn Uzziah. Look, even after he received leprosy, he had time up to when he died for him to repent. So today, even as I share the word of God with you, you have time right now to receive from him and repent and turn to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now start asking yourself, what causes pride in my life? Could it be satisfaction with what you have or dissatisfaction with what you have? Could it be your thinking of who you are and that makes you feel so important? Could it be that what title you hold makes you feel so important? Or could it be what you have? Or could it be the people that you know in your life? Could it be the position that you hold in your company? You think, oh, well, I work for a great company, so I'm so important. Or could it be the way that you dress, your fashion, your sense of fashion? Could it be the strength that you have? Could it be that you are so attractive physically and you think this is so important. Beauty comes and goes so quickly. It's unbelievable. Could it be that you have good health and you think, I am perfect now. I have no need for God. Could it be because you give your tithe? Could it be because of the money that you have? How pretty and awesome you look. The jewelry that you have. The children you have. The grandchildren that God has blessed you with. The family that you come out of. Maybe the amount of money you give to church. What will you do when God convicts you, when Christ convicts you today? Everyone, everyone suffers from pride because the devil planted that seed from the very beginning. And it's only Jesus that sets us free. And for many of us, it's an ongoing journey. It's an ongoing job that God continues to cleanse us, to transform us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ says in, again and again in the scripture, humble yourself before me and I will exalt you. When we exalt ourselves before God, God moves aside and lets you move on with your life. Lead your life the way that you want. But he takes pleasure when we allow him to take control in our lives. Yes, humility looks old-fashioned today. But humility is the character of a true Christian. Hallelujah. Humility is the character of a true Christian. One who is ready to humble themselves before Jesus and say, Yes, Lord, I have sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven. Today I want you to set me free. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. I will read on, pick a few verses. And see, this is the greatest example of humility that we can ever adopt. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, it says this. Have this mind amongst yourselves, which, your, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, 
though he was in the form of God, that is the most high place you can ever be, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men like you and me. And being found in the human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Yes, humbling ourselves can cost, our, can cost us pride in our workplace, in our community and where we are. But remember, this is nothing, nothing compared to the kingdom of God which you give up by being proud and refusing Christ. Hallelujah. Again, let's continue with, 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 uh, with um, Philippians chapter, chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Therefore God exalted him, and he bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. That is nowhere to hide. Hallelujah. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Because Jesus humbled himself, God exalted him to a place that is above all names. And today, as we read in the book of Revelation, what is happening? Everyone is bowing to him who sits on the throne. Why? Because he humbled himself to the point of death for you and me to deliver us from sin. And today he holds the key to where? To death. Death has no control over you. Therefore, Jesus who sits on the throne today is the everlasting one, the one who is above all things, because he done what? He humbled himself. Therefore, this is the greatest example of humility that we can ever adopt. Today, humble yourself before Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to start ministering to you right now. Can I have the musicians, please? Worship team. To humble yourself, you have to find yourself and start to know your place. Indeed, we are small and finite, dependent, limited in intelligence and ability, prone to sin and soon to die and face God's judgment, according to Hebrews 9 verse 27. But we are also God's children. We are also God's children and in his presence there is healing. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for a reason. He died so that when we come to this place, when we come to this place where we look face to face with pride, we look face to face with our sin, we can turn to Jesus and be delivered. Hallelujah. Jesus had the same privilege as God, yet at this place, he found, he found himself on earth. He found himself on earth and death on, on the cross and received brought us, brought us deliverance. Hallelujah. Refuse to be preoccupied by yourself. Refuse to be preoccupied by your achievements. Refuse to be preoccupied by the things that this world wants you to believe are the best things in life. Hallelujah. And if you are a believer like myself, refuse to be controlled, to be preoccupied how, by how well you are doing in the presence of God, but allow the grace of God to move and transform you. Hallelujah. Just as pride is the greatest enemy to your life, the same way humility is your greatest friend today. Hallelujah. It leads you to intimacy with God. It leads you to a place of breakthrough. You start to impart the word of God in people's hearts. It is a sign of greatness in the kingdom of God, according to Luke 22, 24 to 27. You develop the identity and the attitude of Christ when you start to humble yourself before God. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. just want you to start speaking to God. Start speaking to God and just tell him where you are at this morning. I've been speaking for over 40 minutes or so. 
And a lot of that has been to bring you to understand how the enemy works in our hearts. How he has worked in my heart and tried to degrade my life, tried to destroy my life. But Jesus, 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 Jesus is your hope today. Start to speak to him and say, Jesus, you know what? I want to start afresh. I want a new beginning today. I want a new beginning today. I draw a line here today and I acknowledge. Yes, confession is the first point for you to start to break through. Do not blow away what God has said to you today and just say, you know, it doesn't matter. It does matter. It does matter. Confession and repentance is the starting point for you to be delivered from pride. And if you are here today and you do not know this Jesus, whatever I'm talking about here may not make sense to you. And the Spirit of God is not there to help you to get to a place of breakthrough because in many ways you've ignored the Spirit of God and sin has become a normal part of you. So you will not hear when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I want to give you a chance for you to start to hear from the Holy Spirit. And the way to do that is to con co commit yourself to Christ and say, Jesus, you know what? I want a new beginning. I want to know you, Jesus. And as I know you, Jesus, I want to overcome this sin that is pride. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you. If you do not know this Jesus, and if you're watching online or you're watching here right now, if you do not know this Jesus, you do not have a relationship with him, or you probably walked away, Jesus doesn't mean anything to you. Perhaps it's a curse word now. You have rejected him and turned away from him. I want to give you an opportunity today to turn back to him. He does not reject you. He takes you in. He receives you and he makes you one of his own. Hallelujah. Re lift your hand up so that I can pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for trusting this Jesus. Let's just focus on Jesus. Do not look around thinking, who is that who has lifted their hand? Hallelujah. 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 The very reason why this church stands here is so that people will be set free. And therefore today in the name of Jesus, you are set free because you have trusted this Jesus. Hallelujah. And I will pray this and ask you to pray along with me. And as you pray, the Holy Spirit comes and sets you free today. Heavenly Father, I recognize that I am a sinner. And that my sin separates me from you. I freely choose to repent from all my sins. And confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He is my Lord and Savior today. I believe that He died for my sins. I believe with all my heart that God the Father raised Him from the dead. Jesus, I ask you to come. Come into my heart. Change my life. I renounce today. I renounce today. Say it with conviction. I renounce today. Every covenant. Every commitment. That I've made with the enemy. And I know today. If I die. If I die right now. When I open my eyes, I will be in your arms. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Christ Jesus, today, Lord, as your children have cried out to you, Lord, they've raised their hand today, Lord. Trusting you, Jesus. Lord, I pray, hear their prayers today. Lord, I pray for their redemption today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that everyone who has committed their hearts to you today, Lord Jesus, and cried out to you, Lord, to save their life, Lord. I pray, Jesus, today save their life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
that you come for those who are lost such as this such as myself and many that are standing here to the lord today lord i pray lord i pray holy spirit come today fill them fill them today in the name of jesus that they will experience your power today in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah and as i've been praying and leading you in this word as i've been sharing the word of god i know that today there are many who have felt condemned in this house and I tell you today that is not from Jesus Jesus today wants you to be convicted and to turn away from your evil ways so that you will know Jesus and as the worship lead, worship team leads us into a time of worship I want you to start praying and Lord the Lord our God will set you free set you free from pride today set you free from that place of pride today you have seen the symptoms and thought those why the sins that you are living but deep down inside there is pride in you jesus today wants to set you free he wants to set you free so that you have a new beginning in the name of jesus and if you need someone to stand with you in prayer come here we will pray with you come here we will pray with you so that you have a new beginning so that you have a defining moment that the enemy will not rule over you and anytime pride raises its head in your life you will know because the Holy Spirit will minister to you. So start to pray. Start to pray even as we worship. And if you need someone to stand with you, come to the front that will pray with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, today, 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 today is your day. Today is your day. Today is the day when you get delivered of this. Today is the day when you turn this around. Today is the day when you allow Jesus in. It's the day you allow Jesus in so that your life will not be the same again. Hallelujah. Keep praying, keep praying where you are. Keep praying where you are. Keep praying where you are. Keep praying so that you will be delivered. So that you will be delivered. So you will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we surrender. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We surrender to you. We surrender to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do not be like King Uzziah. He went to the grave. He went to the grave with his sins. He went to the grave with his sin. Decide today. Make a decision today to turn this around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is nothing, there is nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot wash away. There is nothing that the blood of Jesus cannot wash away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is freedom, 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 freedom. Come receive your freedom. Receive your freedom today. Receive your freedom today. Receive your freedom today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just, just Him. Just Him. It's only Him that you need in the name of Jesus.
yes, yes, yes. Only Jesus, only the touch of Jesus can deliver you. Only Jesus can deliver you today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the price he paid on the cross, that is sufficient. That is sufficient. That is sufficient for you. That is sufficient for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Surrender, 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 surrender before Jesus, surrender before Jesus, surrender before Jesus, surrender before Him. Let Him take control, let Him take control, let Him deliver you, let Him deliver you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Surrender before Jesus, surrender before Jesus, surrender before Jesus. Yes, there is freedom, there is freedom, there is freedom, there is freedom. Hallelujah. opportunity for you for you to have a new beginning yes only Jesus only he can redeem you only you can deliver you only Jesus can deliver you hallelujah only Jesus can deliver you and as you win as you win against pride as you win against pride you start to experience greater breakthrough you start to experience greater breakthrough he starts to release his blessings into your life he starts to release his freedom into your life he starts to release his peace in your life hallelujah hallelujah some of you have wondered why your prayers are not answered because pride has ruled in your life pride has ruled in your life pride has taken control in your life today today is your opportunity today is your opportunity to turn that around he submits he, he receives he receives he receives those who humble themselves before him those who humble themselves before him he receives he receives he receives and guess what in heaven that is the currency that is known in heaven that is the only currency that is known in heaven we read in the word of god that in the, in the book of revelation that the elders are casting their crowns before the one who is on the throne before the one who is on the throne everything that is happening in heaven is humility is about humility humbling yourself before jesus humble yourself today humble yourself today humble yourself today before jesus before jesus and receive receive your breakthrough start a new beginning start a new beginning he has done it for me he continues to do it for me and i know that he's doing it for many today today is your day today is your day receive from jesus receive your deliverance receive your deliverance receive your deliverance receive your deliverance and as he as he brings it into mind he brings it into mind do not let that go away repent today repent today repent today repent today repent today and be delivered be delivered 
Be delivered. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you move in this place in power. Thank you, Lord, that you are here to deliver, Father. You are here to redeem, oh, Father, those who humble themselves before you, Lord. I pray today, Lord, that, Lord, you destroy, we destroy and arrest the spirit that brings condemnation in this house. We arrest the spirit that brings condemnation in the name of Jesus. Today we declare a day of freedom in your children's lives. We declare a day of freedom in the name of Jesus. We declare your peace in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are here, Father, to deliver us. You are here to heal in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. Yes, move in this place. Move in this place. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. Move, Holy Spirit. We give you glory, Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Humble and contrite heart, Lord. You do not reject. You do not reject. You accept. You accept. You take those who are humble and those who are proud, oh Father. Yes, Lord, oh Father, you reject today. Receive, oh Father. Receive every heart that has humbled itself before you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. to change us. Yeah. You love us enough to not leave us doing things that harm us and harm those we love. You love us you love us that much. So we thank you for this powerful message. Hallelujah. 